Greetings hobbyists, this is our Sands of all, and in this video we're going to have a look at how to use the Raycast node in Geometry Nodes to place objects onto a surface. So this Raycast node has some amazingly helpful features, and I just wanted to cover some of the potential things that it can do. Obviously this isn't going to cover everything, and it's going to focus on one example, which is going to be adding a rivet, or actually adding multiple rivets, to a surface that's not particularly flat. And this can be an absolute pain. If I just bring in something like a quad sphere, which is quite good for this, and I resize it to what I normally have my rivets as, so somewhere in the region of one millimeter on each axis, and then control A and apply the scale. This is normally fairly easy to put onto a flat surface. I'll put it something like there, and then I just duplicate it with shift and D, and then I'll press X to keep it on the same level. Great, really nice and easy. And in fact, actually, I generally have these a little bit higher up just for 3D printing. This gives a little bit more definition to them and allows it to be easier to paint. So fine. But if I then start wanting to add in a lot of rivets, for example, I might want to start to put them on these surfaces. I start having to go, well, OK, about there and then maybe here. No, actually, how does that look? No, this one needs to be a little bit higher so that it matches. It all becomes a little bit annoying. And when you've got a really big object, I mean, this surface isn't even that big, it becomes an absolute pain. And that is before you even start including things that are even more complicated than this. For example, I've got this surface here, which is actually just the same as this, but it's got a subdivision on it. But this undulating surface is even more annoying. So what we're going to do is have a look at how to do this effectively with geometry nodes. Now, I do appreciate there's loads of other ways we could do this. This is just a demonstration, but it is one way where I've used this for rivets in the past and it is particularly handy. So what I'm going to do is just G to move that river over to the side because we're going to use that as an instance in this geometry node setup. So we're going to start with a very basic geometry node setup and then move on from there. But the overall thing isn't that complicated. It's just making sure you know what to do. So we're going to start by adding a mesh and a single vertex. You could do this with anything, for example, a circle or a plane. It shouldn't really be a three dimensional object. Otherwise, it's not going to work very well. But a single vert is a good place to start. If you don't have a single vert, you need to go to edit preferences, add ons and then type in extra. And then if you select this add mesh extra objects, then you are going to have the option to bring in a single vertex. So single vertex, add a single vert. And once we've got that single vert, we'll go into object mode G and we'll move that over to, let's just say here to start with. Actually, let's go over there. So we've got our vertex to start with, and this is what's going to be our geometry node setup. So I'm going to just rename this with F2 and we'll call this rivets to face. And we're going to name this what's down as cube because this is a subdivided cube. Also, if you don't have a quad sphere, this comes with machine tools. Just get machine tools. It's free on Gumroad. If you really don't want to, there are other ways of making a quad sphere, but it does have really nice geometry for rivets because if I go into edge mode, you'll see it has this nice sort of squared off appearance, which means you can subdivide it further if you want it rounder and various other things. And we're going to call this so F2 and rivet. So that's going to be our rivets. So we've got our surface one here. Let's hide surface two. We don't care about that at the moment. And let's select our rivets to face this single vert to start working with our geometry nodes. And we're going to bring our geometry node editor up. Let's bring this so we can see that there. So we're going to start with a standard set of geometry nodes to do instances on a vertex. So shift and A. I'm just going to use the search for instances. So we want instances on points. Let's bring that in there. So we'll notice that the vertex disappears. We need to have something to instance. So I'm going to go to rivet. Oh, that's a good point, actually. I don't think I've covered this. If you want to keep this geometry node set up so it doesn't go away, because normally if you click off onto another object, it disappears. If you just click that pin button, it will keep it there. And then I can just drag that rivet here. So we've got the object info node. That's going to go to our instance, because that's what we want to be instancing. Do, if you haven't already, make sure that your scale is applied. So we've got that appearing there. So at the moment, we've got our instance. That's all we need. We do need to make sure that we're going to have, if you're going to 3D print, us realizing this instance. So I'm going to shift an A and realize instances there, which makes this actually a thing when we confirm this on our modifier stack. So that's where we are at the moment. Now, what we need to do at this point is actually say, well, the vertex shouldn't be up here that this is being instanced on. It should be down on this surface. So we're going to do that over here in this part. The instancing is already done, though we are going to add something to this later. I'll talk about that then. So let's come in here and we're going to control and A 
and we're going to use a set position node. So this is going to tell us where to put this object. And we're going to use these inputs here on this side to be able to tell it where to go. And for this, we're going to use what's called a raycast node. So if I just come in here and click raycast, we've got that there. Now the raycast node has quite a lot to it. I'm going to explain some of these bits, but it's not too much of a big, I'm going to explain some of these bits to it, but the most important at this point is it needs target geometry. So we need to target onto something. And in this instance, that is going to be this surface one. So we need another object info node. I'm going to drag in my object info node for surface one, and I'm going to connect the geometry to the target geometry. It's all color coded, so this is relatively easy to do. Now we do have a few bits down here to be thinking about. The first is the ray direction. Now this states what direction are we gonna be having this vertex, the single vertex that we've got in the middle of this object trying to move towards. And at the moment it is down here in the Z direction. So X, Y, and Z, which means that it's gonna go, that is the most non-straight line in the world, but directly down. So you can change this. It notice it's minus one to go down. So you can change this. You could put this at zero and one of the other ones to be one or minus one. So you could get it going in the X direction or the Y direction would be straight towards the screen in this instance. So it's entirely up to you what you do. We want it going down. I mentioned that in case you're doing something where you're going to be targeting these sideways on an object so you can change this the ray direction is going to be important for that you've also got the ray length this says effectively how far can this line go down to try and hit something so at the moment it's at 100 blender units because i'm not working in millimeters or meters and you might need to change that to make it longer if you find this isn't working finally to make this work you need to change the object info to be relative if this doesn't work, that is probably why. And then all we're gonna do is move our hit position. So this is the position that this vertex here is coming down and striking this object, almost like a laser pointer. We're gonna put that hit position into the position of our set position and notice now it's moved the vertex to down here. Now what's cool about this is if I just go into edit mode for this, we can still see the vertex up there. Let me just drag this down. We aren't finished with this yet, but I just want to demonstrate the point. And because we're instancing on this, all I need to do is shift D and I make another one. So now setting our extra ones is really, really quick. So much easier, so much faster than what I was doing earlier. Great, we've pretty much solved it. Basically, the video's done. Well, okay, not quite. There's actually quite a bit more to it than that. Or at least some more tricks that we can play with. The main one that I want to talk about is the offset option. This is really useful for what I was doing earlier. When I was saying I don't like to have these perfectly centered on this, I can. And notice we could do this with the origin on this object, but we don't need to. And there's more tricks we can do. So I could offset this on the Z just by a little bit, just maybe by there and then that's gonna achieve what I wanted. But then this brings up a slight problem. I say problem, just something to be aware of. So let's move that over there. Oh, I just shrunk that down, bring that back out so we can see it easily. And that is that if I want to have this offset and I then go into edit mode and duplicate this vertex, so Shift and D, and move it along somewhere there, because this is working in the Z axis, we'll notice that this, well, moves everything in the Z axis. But is it what we want? I mean, if it is, that's great. You don't need to worry about this anymore, but I want to show you some other options, especially let's actually G and X this over to here and have a look at this. Well, realistically, this is not the way I probably want it moving up and down because it's not quite the way that this rivet should be on this face. I want this not going straight up. I want this going out, effectively perpendicular to the face. So I'm gonna have to do something else. So let's get back over here so we can see both. In fact, actually let's shift and D and make a whole other one so we can have a look at both of these or all of these at the same time. And we're gonna look at how to do that. So let's put this offset back down to zero. As mentioned, this Raycast node has a lot more to it, a lot of different other things. And very usefully, it has got, and this is the important bit, the hit normal. We've been using the hit position, but it also has or keeps track of the normals of the surface that was hit. And these normals come out perpendicular to the faces, exactly what we wanted. So we need to put this hit normal into the offset. Except for if I do that, you'll notice it jumps out and now we can't change anything. So we've got a double problem here. 
Now I say problem, this is actually Blender being very, very clever. In fact, I hope once I've explained this, you'll realize how clever this is being. Because if I cut that, you'll notice that actually, and then put it back, you'll notice that these are actually traveling out in the direction that we want. Though we haven't actually told it to move anywhere, so why is it going somewhere? Well, that is because this hit normal, if I just get rid of that again, you'll notice this is actually a vector. And although you can't see it here, vectors have a value to them. They're not just a direction, they have numbers associated with them. And for this, a normal gives a value of one. You sort of can notice this. In fact, actually, it's probably easier if I just G and Z that whole object up so it's on this line here of the grid. What we should be able to notice is that this has gone one major unit up. For me, one blender unit, so one millimeter, because that's what normals do. They show you the direction in a value of one. Now, the fact that this is in a value of one is really cool, and let me explain why. Now, what we think we want to do is, if we want to change this, Shift and A, and then we're gonna bring in a math node. So I'm gonna type in maths, and it's vector maths, because we're dealing with vectors. So I could put something in here, and I want to, well, change the amount that this is moving up. Now, well, if we're gonna add a Z value, that is gonna go, well, up and down, because it's Z. It's going in the Z direction. Now, for some reason in my brain, I would think that if you did a multiply, that would have a different effect because you're multiplying it by the vector direction that's in normal, but it doesn't, it still goes up and down. So what we actually need to do is use a scale amount. What's really clever about this is, well, this scales it. So one equals one, two is gonna be two times the distance that it already was, and three is gonna be three times the distance it already was if I didn't have this connected. Essentially, this is multiplication, except for it's multiplying the vector by a number instead of multiplying it, if I come back to multiply, by another vector. We want to just have one vector and multiply it by a single value. Now, because it's a multiplication, this could be annoying because if this moved it out, let's say two, we're gonna have to do lots of maths in it. But because it's moving it only one, this scale value here becomes the distance away. So at the moment, I'm three blender units away. If I go to zero, I'm zero blender units away. One, I'm one blender unit away. Or millimeters or whatever units you're using. So this allows you to control it and you don't need to do any maths in your head. This is the distance away and you can see it moves perfectly perpendicular to that face. So this scale node is the one that you want and it's gonna solve that problem. We can now control the distance Okay, cool, we're all good. We're pretty much set to go. So now at this point, just to be clear, please don't turn off, we're not actually, I'm gonna talk about some issues. We can go to vertex mode, I'm just gonna grab those vertices and delete those. And then, in fact, let's delete that one as well. And then let's shift and A while in edit mode and bring in a plane. So I've got a plane here, G, let's bring that over here. You can see how well this works, it's really cool. And then let's actually come here, let's scale it up a bit, and then S and X, and move that all the way on the x-axis. Let's do something like that. And then I'm gonna control an R and I'm gonna bring in as many as I want. Let's do something like that. So I've got loads and loads of rivets. In fact, let's put one in the middle as well. There we go. There's all my rivets. It's that quick to do it. And I can move these up and down as much as I want. Actually, I think that 0.1 was quite good. I mean, it makes doing these things so fast. It's absolutely brilliant. And if you're interested in this just for CG work, you're just doing this for computer graphics, you're not gonna 3D print, this is probably all you really care about. I am gonna mention one last thing which is really funky, and that is if I click on this object here, this has actually got booleans being applied to it. And the moment I've used box cutter to make this shape, and if I go into face mode, you can see actually this is still a cube. So this will work looking at booleans included in object. So this works really nicely. And if I bring in this surface too, this one's the same thing, but it's got a subdivision on it. And if I wanted to, I could, let's say shift and D and then move this in the X direction. And although it looks like it's not working, that's because if I come to this one, bring up my geometry nodes. At the moment, it's working on surface one. I can change this to surface two and it will work. So this will work on whatever surface you want, undulating or not, 
and I just wanted to demonstrate that. The only thing I will say is if at an edge, something like that, goes too far beyond 45 degrees, it gets a little bit painful and you might want to do another set that's coming from array direction coming, let's say, sideways. Because if you've got your surface like this, you could either have the vertex here and it coming down or the vertex here and it coming sideways. And if you've got a more extreme edge, something like that, probably easier to visualize this coming from the side. That's why the ray cast direction, this bit here, is really important. Now the last thing I want to mention is a little bit spuriously linked to this river idea, but it is important for just general geometry, but more importantly I wanted to show you how you can do something else, and that's how to rotate objects so that they match your face. If I come into my viewport and put in my wireframe, you can see our wireframe for our object. And at the moment it's looking pretty good, but when we come into these ones, this is going to be a pretty ugly boolean when we start bringing things together. It would be much better if this was always perpendicular to the surface and we should be able to do that and the reason we should be able to do that fairly easily is that our instance and point our node here has a rotation setting so we can put a rotation onto these instances after they've moved based on the face that's being hit because we have this hit normal so the most likely thing that's going to happen here which is going to go wrong is if i bring this hit normal down here and to do this, we have to turn this into a vector. So we'll type in a line and we want to align Euler to vector. And then we put the rotation into the rotation. This should work except for it hasn't. In fact, it's just sort of twisted things around a little bit and it hasn't worked very well. And regardless of what we do with this node, it's still not going to work. We can try the different rotations and it's not going to work. Now, there's a reason for that. And I just want to cover what that reason is. And it's very easy to fix. The problem with this is that, and you'll notice this has got a grayed out path, it's putting the wrong thing into this rotation. Hit normals are not a rotation. They are a vector. So if we just cut that off, put that into the vector, suddenly this will work. And you're going to have much nicer prints, especially if you want to have this perfectly on because this is literally going to match it pretty perfectly but either way it definitely causes less problems by having this here you may want to fiddle with this slightly so 0 0.15 will mean that it's not actually crossing any of these points so that would work really well so once you've done that this allows you to move in add geometry as quickly as you want with this so for example i could just go into vertex mode Shift Z, grab those and just E to extrude them out and I've got another one. Or in this instance, because it's a grid that we're making from this plane, another set of three. It really, really makes putting these on where you've got different angles or you've got something like lots of different heights and you can't be bothered to fiddle around with it really, really quick to do. And should you want this node set up even faster, I've started a Patreon channel. And if you join at the 3D design tier, then this node setup is included for the next month. Alternatively, should you just want to support the channel, there's a supporter tier at only $3. And if you can't manage that, it'd be really appreciated if you could like the video and follow the channel if you're not already following it. Have a great day, guys.